It always takes a little moment. It says the meeting is being live streamed. So welcome, welcome, YouTube. Clear Vision Wednesday. I have my innovator t-shirt on today <laughs> because we have a special guest today that I'm so, so super excited about. And it is the, it's Kenneth Schwartz. He's the founder and the chief scientist of C60 Purple Power. Uh, a wellness company dedicated to helping people feel better in their lives. And also, we're really going to focus on the eyes today. So let me highlight Ken so that you can all see him. Hi, Ken. Welcome. Hello. Okay, Hi, great. Yeah, I'm on. <laughs> it's a little so, slow progressing through. Yeah. So, so super excited. I know you're you were like when you and I talked before, I was like, you know, the science and I'm pretty geeky, but I was like, stop, hold your horses. <laughs> I can't follow you this far. But we will we will make sure that everybody listening here today will totally understand what you're sharing and that um, the information that you're sharing is so, so powerful. And so tell us a little bit about your own journey, like your background. I know you're a scientist, but what exactly did you do and how did you discover this Nobel Prize winning molecule called carbon 60? Well, I was working on a fusion reactor project and, uh, you know, we were going to be exposed to some radiation. I didn't always trust the, uh, the shielding because it was kind of a, you know, it was research. <laughs> you know, what you're doing in research, that's why it's research. And so I went out looking for a radiation protectant and I discovered this stuff called carbon 60. And it's, uh, you can see it's like a little molecule of uh, carbon with 60 atoms shaped like a little soccer ball. And, uh, and what it is is, uh, we could, I'm just trying to adjust something here so we can see it. Anyway, it's behind me on the, the wall. It's probably easier than this one. I got that screen going. So, and so it's, uh, and what it is, it's basically they did, it's a super antioxidant and it deals with uh, the two oxidative radicals, superoxide and the hydroxyl ion. Those are the only two oxidative radicals that it reacts with, but those are ones primarily produced by uh, radiation. And so they did studies where one set of rats would get C60, the other wouldn't, they hit them with a fatal dose of radiation. All the C60 rats live were the control rats that didn't get it. You know, they all quickly died. So- Oh, wow, you know, they died. Yeah. Yeah. So they, when I learned about that, I said, well, you know, C60 is for me. So I went out and got some for my, my crew and myself. And, you know, we're all still here, by the way. So it did work. And, uh, but I kind of kept taking it, you know, on and off. I wasn't perfectly, you know, perfect every day with it, but, uh, but seven, eight months afterwards, because uh, things, things like for me, you know, the afternoon blahs went away, you know, about two in the o'clock in the afternoon. Sometimes, you know, after you eat lunch, you kind of hit that crash. That went away, little aches and pains. I used to uh, drive, ride dirt bikes and, you know, had a lot of crashes and broken bones and stuff. So the pains went away on that and nerve damage and stuff. So, but when I went to my eye doctor, my uh, druse or dry macular degeneration had completely disappeared. So and yeah, you didn't say that before, but you had the AMD, the age-related macular degeneration as a yeah. dry form, which is a little less severe than the wet form. Yeah, well, um, so yeah, you so basically, right? The doc, what did the doctor say? <laughs> well, he was kind of surprised because he'd never seen that happen before. And uh, but also about that time, I the electrical engineer on the fusion project, Gary Rodriguez, had developed uh, severe wet mac macular degeneration. Uh, we used to we used to be able to to post his, his medical pictures online. You know, you can see the inside of his eyeballs and, uh, uh, and they had all kinds of lesions on it. So I made a preparation of C60 and MCT oil. Oops, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there we go. I just put it in front of myself, then it says it. And uh, I don't know if your listeners know, but MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. And uh, your ketones, your, your liver can take that and turn it, MCT into ketones. So it's flex fuel for your body. And I did that because Rodriguez, right? He had actually developed type two diabetes and that led to his wet macular degeneration or being a really bad case of it. So, uh, so I, uh, he about after a year of taking uh, a tablespoon of MCT in the morning every day with C60 in it, his uh, wet macular degeneration totally went away. All the lesions on the inside of his eyeball healed up, which was <laughs> something that's not supposed to happen. So, so that's kind of how, that's how my introduction to C60. And so I started making, you know, cause vision is pretty important. And right. uh, so I started making uh, preparations for myself and uh, family and friends and stuff. And then uh, I started giving some to my alternative healthcare practitioners and they were getting great results with themselves. So they gave it to their patients and then their patients were getting good results. And then, and then, so it sort of ended up, and then some guy mentioned me on the internet 
And, you know, the little company I'd started just kind of exploded. So that's how C60 Purple Power came to be, but it's now mutated or changed into shopc60.com. So okay. you can still go to C60 Purple Power and it'll take you there, but Shop C60 is the new one. And there's going to be a whole lot of new products on there that uh, like we have little packets. Uh, oh, yeah, I wanted to bring all my stuff and now I left it in my yes. kitchen. And That's okay. Bring- yeah, we, we've got a, this, we have little boxes of, uh, see one of the things, you know, this is for our MCT for athletes, you know, you, <laughs> this kind of is inconvenient, you know, to take to the gym or, uh, you know, put in your backpack. But uh, so we have, uh, we also have a little, uh, a little like a box, and then they have 30 of these single vid- individual serving packets, which you can take to the gym, put in your purse, your pocket, or, uh, or, you know, use it when athletics, put it in your athletic water. So that's, uh, that's kind of one. And we also have a C60 Sexy. I don't think I have any samples around here because it's the opposite. No, that's, that's a whole different topic. I mean, that yes. also, that's more indirect. <laughs> so anyway. C60 is more indirectly for the eyes. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, so this one, yeah. And sometimes do people do use uh, the MCT coconut oil in the eyes, directly in the eyes? Uh, I would, that, that it's, it's, it's a distillate of coconut oil. So it really doesn't have any taste, doesn't have any color except purple because C60 is purple when we put it in. So we've had a lot of people have success putting that in their eye. I wouldn't recommend, you know, we also sell C60 and avocado oil and olive oil, but I wouldn't recommend putting olive oil in your eye. That's pretty, it's yeah. got a bite when you drink it, so it wouldn't be very good for you to try. So basically, um, I've only been taking it internally. And like you said, the MCT oil is especially great if you have diabetes or you're struggling with insulin receptor resistance, it's tasteless. And I, when I started taking it about a little bit more than a year ago, I noticed what you said too. First of all, I mean, my eyesight is great. I don't have an eye disease, so I don't have that as a reference point for myself. But I noticed that I have, I didn't need that afternoon coffee. I didn't have that, like you said, that slump. I had like my brain is sharp, like focused. I didn't have, and now I just recently had a cold and I felt like my cold was like, yes, I felt I was pretty sick, but I still was able to do coaching calls. Like before I would have literally been like flat out in bed. Like my head would have been so exhausted. So I definitely feel that energetic level and everybody I've been giving it to so many people and um, friends and family. And my mom is 86. She fell and her knee was in pain and arthritis. So her pain went away. So that's definitely like, so tell us a little bit more about like, you know, obviously we talk about eyesight here and we might have some more stories. Do you have, by the way, do you have any more stories about eyesight uh, improvements from like AMD or other um, vision conditions that you can share? Well, yeah, well, we've had, yeah, we've had lots of success with people doing that. I mean, we did a little study on eyesight because some people have reported light cataracts would disappear and that still appears to be the case, but uh, we did a study looking on that and we actually found had people with cataracts and uh, they did, I think we had a dozen people in the study and everybody's vision improved, you know, but the cataracts didn't improve that much. But uh, the vision did, and we, we, it all came down to uh, basically the retina, improve retina health. And, you know, this has been going on for years, so I do, I'm a science research. So we've actually kind of discovered what's really going on with C60. I'm the guy that puts it together and then puts it out there. And uh, what C60 is, C60 is, an, is what they call an SOD mimic. And SOD stands for superoxide dismutase. And that is, a, uh, that is an antioxidant that your cells produce, and most of it goes into the mitochondria in your cells. And I don't, if your listeners may remember, mitochondria are little organelles inside your cell, and they actually have their own DNA. They're like symbiotic bacteria when eukaryotic cells form. But beyond that, they produce ATP, which is the precursor molecule, which is the uh, which is the energy molecule for your cells. So pretty much everything that has to do, you know, with anything going on in the cell, you need ATP, the little, it's like the gasoline of the cell, right? Right, that's what I always say. The gasoline of the cell, whatever you want to call it. Without it, your cell can't run. And so C60, and as we age, the production of SOD and catalase, which your your mitochondrion cells use to deal with superoxide, the most damaging oxidative radical in the body, uh, kind of goes down. And so your mitochondria, which are the energy powerhouses and produce a lot of that SOD, have to like kind of tune themselves down so they don't damage themselves, right? They're kind of self-regulating. So when they take SED, SOD, when you take C60 as an SOD mimic, your mitochondria can turn themselves back on and that allows, and, and now your cells are making all the ATP that they need. And, and, and that's what we think is what's happening here. It's because like, for instance, 
you know, macular degeneration is, is a disease of the retina. Right. The retina in your eye is actually an extension of your brain. It's not really part of your eye. It's part of your brain because, right. you know, that's how you can see. And so any cells that have a lot of mitochondria in the body use, uh, use you know, use, it just does great. Because like, for instance, I think the brain is like 2% the body weight but it uses 20% the body's energy. And the, and the retinal cells use more energy than any other cell in the body. It's the highest. Oh. Yes, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I did some research on that recently. So yeah, no cell in the body produces more or needs more energy to function than the retinal cells. So that's why, oh. and I think that's interesting that you say that about the retina versus the cataracts, which just in case somebody doesn't know, cataracts affect the lens. So let me, let me get my little eyeball here, <laughs> my little eyeball. Um, so the lens is basically, we had a little session with an eye doctor yesterday in my in natural clear vision course. So yeah, so basically, so the lens, right, is this piece here, that's what the cataracts, the, it gets cloudy. So you said you might have some improvements, but it wasn't like, so it, it doesn't affect the lens. Well, that's, that's, yeah, the lens right. cells are like the very, the fewest mitochondria are probably any cell in the body. Right. <laughs> Whereas the retina on the other side has, I evidently has the most mitochondria in the body because that does the most things. Yeah, that's that little patch on the right. back. So this yeah, is, there. by the way, so this is the phobias of macula. So that yellow spot, this is basically when you have macular degeneration, this is, it looks weird because you think, why is it not in the center of the eye? But because we have two eyes and they're focused together, that's why it's kind of a little off center. So the macula is not exactly in the center when you see that, right? It's because this is, I guess, the right eye so it's based on you looking with the left eye and the right eye together. But this is where you basically lose your vision when you have macular degeneration that, you know, you had the milder form, Gary had the severe form. Um, you basically lose all your sharp and color in most, and uh, also majority of your color vision. Um, so basically any, so you're talking about C60 having an impact on the whole retina. What about, here's the optic. So this is the optic nerve that's connected to your brain. And like you said, the retina is part of the brain. So when you have glaucoma, for instance, right, that's a damage to the optic nerve. And we only see the optic disc in an eye exam because we can't see this part. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Right? It's, that is always so weird that you there's actually a blind spot that you don't yeah. even notice because your, your eyes just cleared in. Right. So there is no cells that has a blind spot. There's actually no photoreceptor cells because it's the nerve connecting. Mm -hmm. But what about, um, and I know we haven't talked about it, but what about glaucoma in terms of, because there is, what about, I don't even know about mitochondria, but I'm assuming the nerves also have a lot of mitochondria. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. All nerve cells do. The retina, right. the, uh, the nerve cells. So it helps them. But glaucoma is really just an overpressure of eye fluid. And C60 may help, you know, regulate the cells because it basically, all this stuff happens as you get older, right? You, you notice when you were, we all remember when you were young and right. you know, they just ran gray. We didn't have any health problems. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Well, as you get older, and that's part of the problem, as you're as you get older, the antioxidants your body naturally produces, like SOD, catalase, glutathione, and CoQ10. In fact, CoQ10 is the only one you can supplement for, but the other three, you really can't. You can get the precursors, but that doesn't cut it. And so, uh, so they just go down and you know all these problems go, especially your mitochondria, because they depend on SOD and catalase. Well, C60 does the job of SOD and catalase in one shot to neutralize superoxide, in the hydroxyl ions. So when you take this, your mitochondria turn back on and can start making all that ATP. And that's probably, that's why, you know, uh, that's what we think happens with why the retina healed. And now that I know, I knew retina had a lot of mitochondria, but evidently yeah. since it's the most energy intensive, that means it would have the most mitochondria of any cell in the cells in the body. And so in, the more mitochondria your cells have, the better C60 is gonna bring them back. And right now there's like 3000 different types of quote mitochondria disease. But basically it's because when the mitochondria go bad in one organ, let's say like they're not working as good in your eyeball, well, then you got macular degeneration. Whereas they're not working so good in like one of your hormone producing uh, you know, organs, then that would be another form. But it's basically, you just need the antioxidants. So the, uh, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the, the coolant in your car, right? If you don't have coolant in your car, it's just going to overheat and break because that's what C60 does. It gets in there and, uh, and now your things can run. So the other set, which is kind of a little bit with vision, but not exact, 
is that C60, that the mitochondria also produce pregnenolone, which is the precursor molecule for all the hormones. And so the second group of cells in your body, which have uh, a lot of mitochondria besides the brain cells that work really hard are the cells of the endocrine system. And so people get like a, a big, a significant increase in, uh, in hormone levels across the board. So you get like more melatonin when you're taking C60, so you get better sleep. Also your pituitary, uh, your pituitary thymus or hypo, uh, whatever, hypo, anyway, hypocampus uh, complex that makes the human growth hormone and like a dozens of other master hormones that starts going. And then you got your thymus and your thyroid, you know, your T3, T4 levels probably work. So one of the things is if you're, you know, a lot of people have problems with their thyroid today and it's due to, uh, to having fluoride in the water or fluoride and other things. And because T3 and T4, the three and four stand for iodine, right? That's where the iodines go. And what happens if you got too much fluoride, a fluoride goes in there and then your T3, T3 can't four. So getting, getting away from fluoridated water is really important uh, for good thyroid health. And then of course there's your adrenal glands and they produce the, the androgens, which turn into the sex hormones, mineral corticoids, glutocorticoids. So your hormone levels go up across the board and it's kind of like you go back 10, 15, 20 years in uh, your hormone production and your age. And so things just work better. Including libido, libido goes up. That's another. Yeah, another right. right. Of, uh, C60. I notice all these things. You just feel rejuvenated after taking it. So I have not everybody and one of my my friends uh, who was on this podcast twice, Ray Gottlieb. You know, he is in his 80s. He's a brilliant vision teacher, and he just said it feels like your brain is super sharp and your energy is like so focused. So you know, and he's already healthy. It's not like, you know, like everybody I've been giving, none of them were like sick, sick people, except my mom probably is the sickest in terms of high blood pressure and diabetes and all those things. But yeah, so this is so fascinating. So it really helps on an overall level because it helps you to uh, beat oxidative stress. Is there anything else you want to explain how C60 works uh, or carbon 60 works? And what it can do for us. We also have some questions, but I think we can do Q and A at the end, maybe. Okay, yeah, one of the things are, if you, it, you know, I kind of have the model, is, uh, you know, C60 is kind of a unique molecule. It's a spherical molecule of carbon. And it likes, because it has, you know, their carbon usually has four atomic bonds, or four electron bombs or bonds, right? But because, you know, it's kind of has about three and a half, C60 take, likes to take a little positive charge. And, uh, and most oxidative radicals are negatively charged, so they, you know, they are attracted to the C60. That's kind of how it works. But uh, C60 gets its positive charge, not by giving an electron. Uh, most molecules will give an electron into the environment, into the, you know, the, the water, and, uh, and that makes them positively charged because electrons are negatively charged. If they give one up, then they're positive charged. C60, on the other hand, pulls positive hydrogens, ions from the environment and stores it inside of its cage-like structure. And so when an oxidative radical sticks to it, it just releases one of those hydrogen ions and the hydrogen ion neutralizes the oxidative radical through a couple processes, depending on which one it is. And, and, then, this, and, then, the C, and then it neutralizes either back to oxygen or water and then the C60 resets itself. And that's the key to C60 being several hundred times more powerful than conventional antioxidants because C60 can you know, have an interaction with superoxide or hydroxyl ion, release the hydrogen ion, it resets itself and can do that thousands or hundreds or thousands of times a second. And, uh, and that's its secret. Like most, if you have other antioxidants like glutathione or even SOD and catalase, if they interact with an oxidative radical, right, it changes them. And then you've got to get an ATP from the cell and usually an enzyme to like reset them so that they're going back to their old form. Well, C60 doesn't need an ATP from the rest of the cell it can just do it all by itself and reset itself again and again and again. And uh, of course, C60 doesn't make any permanent chemical bonds in the body. So it washes out in somewhere between four to 10 days, kind of just, just dispersion. Uh, and, uh, and so you need to like supplement every day, but you should take it in the morning because it has a bit of a stimulatory effect. And, uh, and so by taking in the morning, you don't have to, uh, yeah, it can keep you up at night if you take it really late. Except uh, C60 sexy, I guess you can take that at night. Yeah, but that's, yes. <laughs> that's, that's a topical, topical application. That's a topical application, you're right. So, okay. <laughs> um, we do have, let me see. Um, I know you had some studies you wanted to share. You talked about that first one with the mice. 
And the oh yeah, that's oh yeah. There's there's basically yeah. The, what, what C60 was discovered in 1986. And then the guys that got it, it, it solved the mystery in astronomy, by the way. It's made in the stars. It's made in the atmospheres of giant red stars. And people were detecting it in the infrared band, an absorption thing, and they could never figure out what it was. Until finally, these three guys, Harry Croto, Robert Curl, and Richard Smalley, figured it out in 1986, got a Nobel Prize in chemistry because it was such a unique molecule in 1996, but it was really, really hard to make. In fact, before, the early, before 2000, you couldn't really get a hold of it at all. And so they finally figured out how to, to, to make it. And, you know, here's this, this weird, this molecule that's, you know, found between the stars. It's also found like in the burnt wick of your candle, like 0.25%. But, uh, but uh, they, you know, is this thing toxic? So one of the classic studies was the Bhatti study. And they basically gave, you know, they had three set of rats. One set of rats just was the regular control rats. The other set of rats just got... Uh, C60, by the way, doesn't have any solubility in water, so it has to be dissolved in oil. And in this case, they were doing it in olive, in olive oil. So they had one set of rats, the control rats, which just got rat chow. The other set of rats got rat chow and olive oil. And then the third set of rats got rat chow olive, and C60 dissolved in olive oil. And so basically at the end of the study, we can go along. The, the, basically the rats that got the C60 in olive oil had a 90% increase in lifespan over control rats. So and, and now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get a 90% increase in lifespan. What they did, these were, they what the rats they were using are Wister rats, which were kind of like wimpy rats. I mean, they don't pull rats out from the street to test. They have kind of wimpy rats that, the, <laughs> they that they like to the test stuff on. Rats, they have the wimpy ones. Yeah, but uh, the wimpy, wimpy rats just live like a full rat lifespan. Wow. Right? So they, just live, they didn't have any, you know, they basically completely prevented the occurrence of cancers, cognitive decline, and other diseases associated with aging Wister rats. And so that was the one. They did another study with like mice and they, uh, they found that C60 completely prevented cognitive decline in the mice. Oh, oh the other way, the Bat Botry study went to like, I think it wasn't over till like, I don't know, 2008 or 2010 or something, because the rats had lived so long, right? They live for five and a half years, which is way longer than a normal rat lifetime, especially a, a Worcester rat. And so, uh, so in fact, the last two rats had a terrible accident, so they could publish the paper. But, uh, yeah. oh, but no. the, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but the, uh, so that that's kind of uh, so that one. And then, and but some some other people were smarter. They did a like they did lifestyles on mice, right? Mice have much shorter lifestyles. So right, right. They decided they did that, and they did the same thing significantly extended the lifespan of mice and completely prevented the cognitive decline of the mice. They had the mice run through little mazes, right? And, um, and so the mice that, you know, they didn't, the, unlike the control mice who, who had a hard time getting out of the maze, the mice that, uh, the mice that uh, had uh, C60 didn't. So they, they didn't cognitive decline. And then they did the, like the radiation studies I told you about. They'd done studies. Uh, they'd done some human health, the human studies. First human study was, uh, they put C60 in face cream, and you can use our product, by the way, topically. And they found oh, that you C60. Can put it on your face. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. C60 significantly reduces the appearance of lines and wrinkles in oh. uh, in Japanese women with the cream. You can use our product, get the same result. Then the other one, they use C60 topically uh, on for on hair, and they found that C60 significantly increased the growth rate of hair. I think like 18 percent. Anybody that takes C60 massaging knows that. It, massaging into the scalp or just putting yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, just, yeah, they just put it in there. Oh. And unfortunately, it, it, like, especially people that have problems with uh, like hair loss, not due to male pattern baldness. Okay. <laughs> it's male pattern baldness is something else. That's from, that's only like North Europeans get that. That's because they use live really far north. And, uh, and vitamin D is really important and they wear clothes, so. No, like an adaptation that it does. So you can't fix that. But if you have like a, a other reason, if you're a woman or somebody else and you're losing hair because of some health reason, C60 appears to bring back that. Well, what about and, pregnancy? I remember when I was uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, yeah, we don't know about C60 during pregnancy. No, I mean, after when you give after birth. After pregnancy. Oh, yeah, after you pregnancy. You put hair and then you give birth and you everything sheds like crazy. Oh. Okay, well, I ended up being, ever being pregnant. I didn't know that, but uh, yeah, C60 is topically would probably help that. It seems to expand it, it, to extend the lifespan of the of the life cycle, of the hair follicle, because the hair follicles they run and they go to sleep and they can wake up, so it kind of keeps them awake longer, so the hair gets longer and thicker, 
And so that was one. Then they did another study in human mast cells and they found that uh, mast cells release the histamines that you know, cause allergic reaction and C60 moderated the release of histamines. And so then that took to some animal studies and they found that the animals that were given C60 when exposed to an allergen that they had been made allergic to didn't go into a cytokine storm or aphylactic shock, I guess they would call it. So C60 prevented that appearance of cytokine storms. And then, uh, and then another one, they found that C60, uh, skin, human skin cells with C60 were, were protected against damage from UV radiation. Really? So when you put it on like, as it like a sunscreen yeah. or? Yeah, it could help. It could, well, it's not a full sunscreen, but it will help protect from damage, especially if you've been burnt. But you know, like, you know, sunscreen can't help you if you've been burnt. Right, right. But right. C60, if you have got a sunburn and you put slap on a whole bunch of C60, C60 will go in there and and uh, kind of stop the whole cascade of oxidative damage. Wow, that is so and so your your the time that you're going to be red and inflamed will go away there. In fact, it does all kinds of really good things like mosquito bites. If you get a mosquito bite, you put C60 on it topically. About 20 minutes later, your itching will go away. Oh my God, this is amazing! I had no idea. I now I know all these other things I can can do yeah. with it. Questions in the in the yeah. Chat. And if you use the MCT oil. The uh, MCT oil, by the way, is very antibacterial, antifungal. So people, I mean, even if it wasn't C60 in it, it would still be right, the same right. way. So, it's so a if, you put, if you get like something to do with like fungus or something, infection, C60 will take care of that. So, wow, that's and bacteria, amazing. bacteria have cell walls. MCT oil messes with anything with a cell wall. Our cells have membranes. We have cell membranes. Bacteria have a cell wall and yeast and fungi have cell walls. And so MCT oil really messes with cell walls. So it's kind of like an anti-fungal, anti-bacterial, just by itself, MCT. Wow, that is so fascinating. I mean, we went off a little bit of the topic of eyesight, uh, but it's, I yeah. mean, this is a just amazing. Um, so like, is it recommended to use this for prevention or like obviously in your case with AMD, it was basically, you know, you happened to take this because you work on this reactor project and now you yeah. have, you know, you have, do you have more stories that people? Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have lots of stories on that. That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, of course, I'm not a medical doctor and can't give medical advice. Right, same here. So yeah. that's, so, yeah, I can't say whether I can, you should use it as a protective or whatever it is. I'm, I really, all I can say is my experiences, the experiences of other people. It's not an FDA approved, has not been, you know, approved to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent, or mitigate any disease. I mean, all right. I can say is the anecdotal experiences of myself and lots of other people. And of course, the science studies, there are human science studies, there's way more animal studies, but but you know, animal studies cannot be quote, directly translated to humans because it's a, uh, you know, they're animals. And so, but one of the things is C60 works at the cellular, cellular level. So it's gonna get the mitochondria back and that works for animals, people, lizards, birds, it doesn't matter, you know, C60 does the mitochondria, and uh, and and also it's of course it's an antioxidant, so it's just you know all around inflammation. You can you can see it when you use people use it you know for like on their arthritis and the swelling goes down, the pain goes down. In fact, that was kind of one of the things that they did. It was interesting. They did it with uh, with uh, rabbits. They gave rabbits uh, uh, arthritis, right? Because that's what scientists some scientists do. And then they put C60 in there, and they found out that it definitely reduce the inflammation, which of course was what the experiment was. And then, but they also discovered it caused the cartilage, cartilage to regrow. So it regrew the cartilage, you know, suppose getting rid of the damage as well. And then eventually the other studies and things, they found that C60 also stimulates stem cell production. So if you, people that have like, we have the seven year old guy who goes into the, uh, get, to get a blood draw to do, you know, they do that stem cell therapy. And he had right, the stem cell levels of a 20 year old. And we have another, some Russian billionaire. He used to, he's in his eighties. He used to get like four or five draws of blood just to get enough stem cells, you know, to do a treatment. Now it's just one draw of blood is enough for this treatment. So, right. so that's, so that's why, that's why it's uh, well, yes, it does work. I see one of those things. Yes. It really helps. Okay. Yeah. They found in animal studies, C60 really help with arthritis in animal. But, but, but that also regrows the cartilage too. So it's like a double, a double whammy thing. So the inflammation goes down and the cartilage can start regrowing again. And cartilage is notorious to rebuild. And it's basically what's happening is stem cells are being recruited to turn into cartilage cells and that's rebuilding. And that's also why they think that the lines and wrinkles 
in Japanese women went down because what it is, is your skin is constantly, you know, you know how your skin sheds, right? It's right. constantly replacing itself and it replaces itself basically by stem cells converting into skin cells, which then, uh, which then, you know, replace it. And that's as you get older, you don't have enough stem cells. So your skin gets thinner and you get wrinkles, right? That's kind of the whole thing. And so they, when C60 is on there, it increases stem cell production. And so you have more stem cells. So your skin, that's what causes the wrinkles and uh, fine lines to go away because now you have more stem cells. Your skin is thick, is, is thinner, thicker and healthier. So. so what other, like, okay, well, first of all, we have a lot of questions. We're going to get to those in a moment. Um, no, I lost my train of thought, but osteoporosis. So does it also help with osteoporosis, for instance? Well, are, are we still on YouTube? We are still on YouTube. I'm just saying. Yeah, so probably I could talk about things, but uh, some things that being not being a medical. I mean, I, here's the thing. Anecdotal, I know FDA, like, but uh, anecdotal stories. If people have changes in their health, yeah. and uh, I can yeah, attest really? to those, I don't have any of those diseases, mm -hmm. but I did notice my joint pain. I do have a little bit of arthritis. So my joint pain went away. So that yeah. I had from like, yeah, so that I can detest yeah, that. Probably, I can... I'll probably talk more specifically about things after the YouTube show. Okay, after the YouTube And, and in your private, your private chat, which anyone listening to this on YouTube can join her from uh, the links below her, her YouTube. Yeah, you can basically contact me. Uh, we are here with the Clear Vision Club members on uh, on Zoom and our guests, and then we live stream the YouTube. So you can definitely reach out and find out how to join that clear vision club and be part of this group every every month but let's get back to uh um, so first of all you talked lots about animals so i'm assuming it's really great for pets oh to, yes yeah well, okay we have a couple pet things outside the door but i don't want to let them in because they'll be crazy so yeah it's uh, i'm in the office we have some of the pets. <laughs> okay <laughs> let's come to the office too here and so yeah so it's yeah it's incredible for pets especially older pets because they'll just, you know, a lot of the dogs that are just about the end of the line. I mean, like the German Shepherd was just lying around. They were thinking maybe they have to put it down. They gave it a teaspoon, a, a tablespoon a day. And obviously smaller dogs need less, but, you know, a, a tablespoon a day and the German Shepherd was back up running around, you know, living its happy dog life. That's so yeah, dogs and cats and, uh, and other things love it. The only thing is if you're doing, a, if you have a bird, birds shouldn't get av avocado oil. Okay. Okay. Good to know. But um, so I was, yeah, the thing I was, now I remember what I wanted to ask. So the, so with stem cells, right, I'm definitely not a scientist, but I know that stem cells can turn themselves into anything, including cancer. So when C if C60 improves uh, the stem cell production, how do we know that it goes to the right cells? Oh, one of the things that C60 does, and like in the Batri study in animals, it completely prevented the occurrence of cancers and cognitive decline. Uh -huh, okay. One of that does, it's because there's a thing called senescent cells. And, uh, and what happens in senescent cells and other cells with the big C is they, uh, they actually, the DNA is damaged in these cells and can't function. And normally there would be processes like the P53 gene or the mitochondria would cause apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Well, that doesn't happen with these cells. And, and what the way they do that is the cells go from burning oxygen, oxygen processing, right? Through the mitochondria, through the Krebs cycle to fermentation. And, you know, which is like a primitive way of doing it. It's like what bacteria and yeast do. And, right. so, and so what happens is, and the way they do that is they stop providing uh, oxidative or antioxidants to the mitochondria. So the mitochondria can't make ATP anymore. And in fact, because, uh, and so they actually, the mitochondria have to go into fermentation anyway, because they're from bacteria, right? So they'll do that. So the cells, the, these cells are now fermentating, which is about 1 20th as efficient as regular oxygen burning. And they're also producing, as we know, fermentation makes alcohol and a lot of other nasties. So they're not only poisoning the cell. Well, when C60 goes inside of a senescent cell, what happens is it gets into the mitochondria, the mitochondria actively uptakes C60, they turn the Krebs cycle back on, which is makes ATP. They start sending that out. But they also, because now that they're functioning again, they'll send messages to the nuclear DNA, the main DNA of the cell. And if they don't get the right message back, they will initiate apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And the cell will break down into apoptotic bodies, and which can be cleaned up by the phagocytes. And this is a non-inflammatory process, by the way. So this does not cause inflammation. And wow. so, and so that's how, that's how C60. So yeah, so that's why we think stem cell production goes out because C60 goes in your body. It wipes out all those zombie cells 
that are just draining energy and poisoning the cells around them and contributing nothing to the body. And then because now the tissue organ, whatever has less cells than it should, it sends out messages saying, Hey, we need more stem cells. And then you have more stem cells. So the occurrence of more stem cells in the person or the animal is due to basically apoptosis of senescent zombie cancer cells. They're basically being wiped out. Now they need new cells to replace them. And that whole process is uh, what's been going on there. So you're literally with, you know, we found a lot of people that have been taking C60 and they're actually their average telomere length from telomere tests will actually increase. So that's a side effect, which just shows that the average length of telomeres within the sample has increased because there's probably more young baby cells from stem cells than there were before in that tissue. And usually it's a, usually it's a rub on your cheek cells, you know, inside your mouth. Some mitochondria stuff do they, uh, some of the telomeres do a blood from the blood, but that's a different set of things. So that's so interesting. I recently read about a study that did and that David Sinclair did at Harvard Medical School. He's the anti-aging mm -hmm. expert or like long, longevity expert. And they did some studies with mice where they make, gave them glaucoma and then they gave them, and now I forgot the name of the guy. It's like the Japanese, it's some like combination of genes, but they only took three of the genes. Um, and baby turned the, the cells into the, in the eye and the nerves back into baby cells and the glaucoma was gone. Yeah. So I'm curious if that, you know, C60, like, but you said you didn't have any, you didn't have any uh, studies or any kind of um, examples of people with glaucoma recovering that vision, right? Like, oh, no. Know? Yeah. And, and basically glaucoma, it's uh, there's two reasons. Either your, your overproduction of, uh, of, of the, the fluid inside your eye, the vitreous humor, or what's happening is that the the because it's being produced, and some of it's got to be dumped. That the the I guess right. the drains get jammed. The, drain is, the yeah. drains get jammed, which is everything. But actually, here in Colorado, we have the cannabis treatment. That's the other treatment for glaucoma. Is you just smoke a lot of pot, and it seems to fix the problem. Well, the CBD. I have a guest <laughs> talking about CBD next week, so maybe that would be more interesting for glaucoma. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that's know. glaucoma cures. Yeah. The but yeah, okay. it's just it's just so that's more of a mechanical problem many times. And but it comes with aging, so anything with aging C60 appears to help because it makes the cells work more efficiently. So it may help, but there's no direct studies of that. So we did already talk about osteoporosis and kidneys. I don't know what that means. That was a question about osteoporosis and kidneys. Yeah, well, um, we can. Yeah, some of those we can talk offline. Okay, gotcha. Because those are some things I can talk about a lot of things, but I can't. Yeah, about. yeah, and same with lung. Somebody, the yeah, question. All, those, all those things, yeah. Most has of those any medical questions I need to take offline. Yeah. No, has anybody tried it for chronic fatigue or long? Oh yeah. Oh, it does great for chronic fatigue. And okay, uh, what's, what's that? Uh, fibromyalgia. I mean, like people say, oh, the women say it's usually women who get fibromyalgia. They say, oh, <laughs> you know, like uh, it, 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 it got rid of my fibromyalgia or it greatly reduced symptoms. But of course, we don't really know everything. We know fibromyalgia is like an infl inflammatory condition, but they don't really know what causes it. It just is. Right. Because, but it's usually something that is multiple causes. And so they multiple causes build up to, to create a condition called fibromyalgia, but there's no real clinical diagnostic for fibromyalgia. It doesn't, right, right, exactly. it's, not a, it's not technically a disease. It's a kind of a condition. So, so let's talk just a little bit because we have to also wrap up the YouTube live. We, let's talk a little bit about like, because you can look on Amazon and find carbon 60 and you can find it like uh, really cheap. Let's talk a little bit about the production and why, because when you look on the website, right, I put the link in the chat, you're like, Ooh, this stuff isn't exactly, you know, pennies. So no. why, but no, I'm honestly, because I think it's super important when it comes to supplements to take the highest quality and talk a little bit about the manufacturing process of carbon yeah. six and why yeah. and that's also is, question about the oils so the three different oils but let's talk about generally speaking about yeah. like why uh, now when, when c60 was a small there was just a handful of producers and pretty much every made everybody made a quality product that you know because they were using it their families were using it but what happened was c60 became popular and just like in the cbd market we had all of these fly-by-nighters come in and so you don't know whether you're, there's a lot of people that there's no C60 in the product, low levels of C60, low quality C60. So there's basically three things you need to look for when you're looking for a C60 product. The first is purity of your C60. You want 99.99% pure C60. If you're not getting that, that's the industry standard. You don't want that. If it's 99.9%, .9%, don't buy that 
product because it because this is just the second thing is how your C60 is produced. And our C60 is produced by sublimation. Sublimation, if you remember from chemistry class, is a, a relative of evaporation. It's when a solid turns from a gas, it turns from a solid to a gas back into a solid. And so that happens in a sublimator. So in the production ashes and C60, it's maybe 10% C60. The rest is just a bunch of carbon ashes. So you put it in the sublimator, you heat it up to 400 degrees Celsius, the C60 vaporizes, floats to the other side of the sublimator, condenses on the, sub, on the plates, and then you scrape it off and it's like 99.99%. That's the C60 you want. Most C60 out there is actually produced by a solvent process. Mm. They dissolve it with methyl benzene, a known carcinogen, a very powerful industrial chemical. And then after they've got the C60, they kind of dissolve the C60 in the soluline, the toluene, and then they boil the toluene off until you get the C60. Then they oven bake it. You ever see anything called oven bake or whatever, ESS, whatever you want to call it, supercharged, whatever. What you're dealing with is solvent-based C60. And it's and no matter how much they bake it, you're always going to have a little bit of that methyl benzene left, which mm. is you know a toxic industrial chemical, which is kind of why you're to protect yourself against you're taking C60 in the first place. Right. Why add to that burden? So if you're out looking at a product, and when you do sublimation, it's like 99.99% or 99.98%. That's just the nature of the sublimation process. Because like distillation, it's very pure, right? Where if you look at a product and you see like 99.9% pure C60, what they're not telling you is that other 0.1% is methyl benzene, toluene, an industrial solvent. Or for God forbid, it's 99.5%. Then you're 0.5%, you know, solvent. So that's that's what you want to look for. So you want to look for purity, which is 99.99%. And, and you want a, you want a sublimated C60 product. And we're not the only producers out there that make a sublimated C60 product, but it should say right on the bottle or certainly on the, uh, on the, on the website that this is a sublimated product. This is from sublimated C60. So 99.9% purity and sublimated C60. And then the final thing is what sort of carrier oils do you want it in? And there's kind of like the Goldilocks selection of oils. Now, on one hand, you have oils which have a really long shelf life, but the other consequence is they're kind of inflammatory because they have high levels of omega-6s. And we know these like canola oil, soybean oil, uh, sunflower oil, uh, safflower oil. These, these seed oils basically have really high levels of seed, of of uh, omega-6s, which makes them inflammatory. And you don't really want that in your diet because it's bad for you. And that's, you know, all those oils is actually one of the reasons for many of the health problems Americans have, because, you know, they'll fry their, they'll fry those, you know, those uh, French fries in canola oil, right? And then you eat those French fries. Now you're getting, you have an inflammatory health condition. So that's what it is. And then, so do you want to avoid those oils? You know, canola, sunflower, safflower, you know, the, those seed oils. Then on the other hand, you have oils that are really, really great for you, like, like fish oil and flaxseed oil and hemp seed oil, because they're really rich in omega-3s. Only problem is omega-3s go rancid really quickly, right? And so if you've got an oil rich in omega-3s, like for instance, if you're going to look for a flaxseed oil or fish, fish oil or hemp seed oil, always buy them out of the refrigerated section of your health food store. Chances are, if you buy a fish oil off the shelf in a health food store or anywhere, it's going to be rancid because who knows you how long it's been sitting there. These oils go rancid really quickly. So what it went down at uh, C60 Purple Power, we selected like the Goldilocks of oils. And uh, one is when, when C60 first came out, everybody had it in olive oil because that's what the scientists use because olive oil is- uh, studies, right? Yeah, and olive oil is well characterized. We all know how olive oil works, Mediterranean stuff. It's well characterized. So then it's cheap and plentiful available. So that's what they use for the studies. But the problem is if I took like an ounce of olive oil, <laughs> I'd probably have to visit the bathroom and so much for the C60. <laughs> so, cause I have a sensitive digestive system. So the next thing, so I started making it for myself and other people, friends and family is we put it in avocado oil. And avocado oil is just as healthy as olive oil, but it's way easier for your body to digest. It has, you know, all, all of these oils like olive oil, the Mediterranean diet, avocado oil, they have a nice balance of omega threes and sixes. So they're healthy for you and anti-inflammatory. And they also have a long enough shelf life. So they're not going to go rancid for you for a couple of years. So 
So that's why we picked that, those two. And so olive oil and avocado oil, they, they're, they're really, they're both good oils for you. You know, the olive, extra virgin olive oil always has that bite. You know how that is. And it's a little bit harder to digest. Avocado oil is great, has a great thing. And then, of course, there we also put it in MCT coconut oil, which, as I mentioned before, medium chain triglycerides. This is great for people that have glucose processing issues. MCT is because the MCTs can be converted by your liver into ketones, which your body can use as flex cell, flex fuel. So if you like, you're going to the glucose crash, don't buy a, don't get a candy bar, take some MCT oil. And, uh, and that's why I made it for Gary because, you know, Gary, I talked about how his macular degeneration went away. Well, he went away because, you know, Rodriguez, right? He had, uh, he had uh, developed type two diabetes, right? And so not only did his, uh, did the, did the, the macular degeneration go away, but his type two diabetes went away. But if you've got any health process, MCT oil is just great for you. And Just I love that it's flavorless. So I put it in my coffee or smoothies or it doesn't have any taste. Um, yep. so we taste have it in those, those cool single serving packets that if you go, yeah. to, uh, go to shopc60.com, you'll get these packets because you can put these in your purse. And a lot of people use this for paleo coffee. I don't know if people out there that they've heard of paleo coffee, but MCT oil is what you put in paleo coffee. Right, so you right. in ketosis because you can't gain weight from uh, and, and it's a saturated oil, but it's a healthy saturated oil. Right. You always hear those things. Oh, saturated oils are bad. No, there are bad saturated oils, like maybe some animal fats. And then there's good ones like coconut because it's a short chain, uh, very short chain saturated fat. And so it just turns to ketones in your body. You're staying ketosis and an instant flex fuel for your body. A lot of athletes use this, by the way. We had people with the uh, C60, they were like mid-pack and they take our C60. Because when you're using C60 and you're exercising, mm -hmm lactic acid buildup slows down. So you can oh. run farther, faster, you can lift more weights when you're using C60. And so they actually put it in their water. So they used, they have water in the MCT coconut oil water and they just drink it as they go around the track, right? And, and so they get like supercharged with the MCT and then they get the antioxidant protection from the C60. And we had guys go from mid pack to uh, championships in their field uh, using wow. C60. And by the way, C60 is, it has not been banned by any athletic uh, testing organization because it's all carbon, right? It's just 60 carbon out of shape like a soccer ball. And, you know, you're a carbon-based organism, so it really doesn't fit into any categories. So they, so it's, it's athlete safe. So we have a bunch of questions and I don't want, some of them I think I would love to do on YouTube before we close the YouTube live. Okay, yeah, anything that's innocuous. And yeah, it's not, it's not a medical a, condition. I'm not a medical doctor. I cannot. Yeah, we will talk about those. I'm a research things. scientist, and yes, yes. You know, I can only do anecdotal things. Um, so there's a question: um, Do you sell a different product for hormones? But you basically said this affects all the hormones. So. Oh no so, no no! It's yeah it's yeah. Any all the only thing you want to do is what oil you want to take it in. So tell That's us a little bit about the difference between the oils, other than the taste. Okay, and now the the taste is okay, Mediterranean. This is olive oil. We all know about the Mediterranean dog. Olive oil has a lot of phenols in it, polyphenols, in which, it, which are also an antioxidant. And, uh, but that's the stuff that also gives it the bite. And so, but C60 is a powerful antioxidant. So, those, so we have avocado oil, and this is for people with sensitive digestive systems. And, uh, and, and so it's, it's much better. Now, olive oil and avocado hold about twice as much C60 as the MCT coconut oil does. But then MCT coconut oil is so that is so, you know, it's very expensive because it's our distillate off coconut oil. And so, so we just, uh, we have that option too, because athletes and people with glucose processing issues just love MCT. And that's also the stuff you'd like to apply topically because it doesn't smell. It's very clear. And it's, uh, and also it's, uh, it, it just MCT goes after bacteria and fungals just because it goes, MCT oil goes after anything with a cell wall. It's also... Pros and cons, right? Yeah, it's a little expensive, but it's a great weed killer too, because it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll so it take out anything. Clear. The MCT oil just chemically, right, holds less carbon 60. Oh yeah, it's, it's short chain. Yeah, this is like right. so oils that. like avocado and olive oil. The average uh, length of these is 18 carbon chains, right? You oh, have okay. a triglyceride, triglyceride is three. So you have three 18 chain carbon lengths off of it. When you get an MCT oil, You've got three, you still have three chains, but they're somewhere between eight to 10 to six. You know, they could, you could have all different sizes, but it's like eight to 10. So it's about the half the length of carbon chain 
And C60 has no solubility in water. What it does, it kind of sticks to the hydrogen on the, 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 the oil chains because those triglycerides, they're basically carbon chains with hydrogens attached to them. And so C60 has a, uh, has, is a, does hydrogen, light hydrogen bonding with the, oil, with the hydrogens in the oils. And uh, so it's actually a fourth van der Waals force. It hasn't been characterized yet, but if anybody's looking out there to get a to get a, a doctorate for their chemistry, even a Nobel Prize, so I can figure out the van der Waals or the new. It's a new van der Waals force binding okay. that C60 does. It's kind of like totally unique in nature, but it hasn't. Somebody hasn't characterized it yet. It's not my specialty uh, in in science to do that. All right, we have a couple more questions. So one of them is, and I, where do you source the carbon? Does it have heavy metals in it or how do you test for it? Oh, no, no, our, our carbon is 100% carbon graphite rods. And, uh, and what they do, actually they make C60 the same way it's made in uh, giant red stars. Pretty much everybody does this. So it's, it's all even, you know, it's, it's, it's it basically you got two carbon rods in a light helium atmosphere, like one tenth the atmospheric pressure of the earth. And you run a big electrical charge through it and it, puffs it into to a bunch of ashes. And if you do it right, I'm not gonna tell all the secrets, uh, but uh, if you do it right, you can turn about 10% of that carbon into C60. And there's a little bit of C70, another fullerene, and a touch of C84. And you, want, you don't want those in your C60. And so that's why you do, that's what comes to the method that you want. Now sublimation, C60 evaporates or sublimates four magnitudes faster than C70. So that's why we use them the purification thing. And, uh, and so that's how we get our 99.9% pure C60. That, but that's also the, the, so this is where, this is where the important thing is why you have to be, stay away from uh, basically solvent produced C60. And the thing is, if you're looking at a C60 product and it's cheap, C60 costs more by weight than gold. Really? That's why it's expensive. Yeah. And, and the price is going up because uh, of inflation. We all know about that. Right, right. So yeah, no, C60 costs more by weight than gold. And so if you, so you see a cheap C60 product, well, either A, there's no C60 in the product. There's some people out there doing that. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't actually have the concentration that's going to be useful for you, or it's, uh, it's, it's low quality C60, you know, it's not 99.9% .9 or 99.5%, which means you're getting a lot of solvent. So that's why you always look for a supplement, sublimated C60. If your C60 product doesn't say sublimated, it's, a, it's produced by solvents and you've got toxic industrial chemicals in that C60 product, and I, which you probably don't want to be taking. Right. I mean, somebody on YouTube is asking, so has the no oil option been released yet? No, because C60 doesn't, right? It has to be dissolved in oil. Well, there, there's, a, there's a type called polyhydroxinated C60, which you put, and, and that's basically used in animal studies, and it's, and it's really used for injections. It's water-soluble but they use it oh, okay. in injections into animals or I suppose people, but uh, that's much more expensive than regular C60, by the way. And, uh, and, and it usually needs to be injected, so. Okay, so that's not, that doesn't work as yeah, a- Yeah, it's not really a consumer, yeah. The C60 you're looking for is C60, and you gotta watch out there. There's some people talk about charcoal C60 or shungite C60. Yeah, charcoal and shungite might have C60, even the burnt wick of your candle, has like 0.25% C60, or maybe, or, and you know, maybe charcoal has 0.1% C60. Mm. You're looking for 99.99% C60 purity. That's the purity you're looking for. So if there are people telling you they got dissolved C60 or, you know, supercharged C60 or C60 in charcoal or act, you know, they're, they're just selling you, they're not getting C60. You're just getting right. fraudulent product. Okay, the last thing, I think that makes sense. Um, is there such a thing as too many oxidants? Can C60 cause a toxic overload? Like uh, that is the secret of C60. And unlike every other oxidant, antioxidant out there, C60 only reacts with two oxidative radicals, the superoxide radical and the hydroxyl ion. And both the superoxide is the most damaging oxidative radical in the body. And the hydroxyl ion is the second most damaging oxidative, battle, oxidative radical in the body. And neither of them the body uses for signaling molecules. C60, they did a test. They, they gave, you know, C60 gave one gram per kilogram of body weight uh, for rats, which is 10,000 times the dose a person would be taking, the health beneficial dose found from other scientific studies. 
And even at that level, there was no toxicity because unlike other antioxidants like vitamin E, vitamin D, vitamin C, NAC, you can have negative effects because there are oxidative radicals in your body that your body uses as signal, signaling molecules. It's a redox. There's a little bit of oxidative antioxidants. And so one of them is nitrogen oxide. That's an oxidative radical. That's what dilates your capillaries or contracts them, right? That's super critical to health. And if you take like too much vitamin E or D, uh, you know, it'll interfere with that. Also hydrogen peroxide, that's not really an oxidative radical, but it will, it's an oxidant and it will react with some of these uh, things like vitamin E and D and stuff. And, and it's your body uses a signaling molecule. Then there's a bunch of other molecules that are oxidative radicals based around sulfur, iron, and zinc that your, your cells produce as signaling molecules within themselves and between the cells. And, and a lot of those antioxidants you take will actually interfere with them if you take too much. C60, you know, because if you took one gram of uh, like vitamin E per kilogram of body weight as a rat, you'd probably die because it'd be toxic to you at that level because it would, it would, it would interfere with the signaling molecules in the cell. But C60 had no, <clears throat> had no toxicity because it, uh, it doesn't interfere with the, uh, the signaling molecules in your cell. Gotcha, so, gotcha. so yeah, there's no tox C60 has no toxicity virtually gotcha. at any level. Just uh, there was a sorry, there's, I, I, there's so many cool questions, but the one the study with the rabbits, I think it was it rats or rabbits? Oh, they, uh, oh, that, the, that was yeah, where they gave the ra rabbits arthritis. Yeah, okay, where the arthritis improved and they regrew cartilage. Which version of the C60 did they use and was it used topically or internally? Oh, they used the, they used the polyhydroxinated one. But that okay. doesn't matter because what happens is the polyhydroxinated C60 has hydroxyl ions and it, and it has to shed every single hydroxyl ion before it becomes biologically active. Gotcha. So when, when it's hydrox, polyhydroxinated, it is not biologically active. It has to shed it. And the same way C60 attached to the oil is not biologically active until you take the oil and then the C60 comes off of the oil and then your cells take it and uh, use it for whatever they're going to use it for. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's merely the delivery form. The C60 has to be it only, and when you need to look at this, only singly dissolved individual molecules of C60 have any health benefit. Particles of C60 don't have health benefits. They'll, there's people that will sell you like a, a capsule of powder with C60 in it. That's not going to do you any good. Or particles of C60. A lot of the stuff they call water dissolved C60 is just particles of C60 that are suspended in water. It, it won't work for you. It's act, in fact, particles of C60, like other nanoparticles, are, can be inflammatory. Only singly dissolved molecules of C60 in an oil, or in some cases, if you're injecting it, polyhydroxinated, have been found to have any health benefits. Particles of C60, in fact, you'll see some reports out there about negative about C60, and every single one of those reports is about, is about particles of C60, you know, like nanoparticles. It's just like silicate dust, you know, that people got that minor, you got silicosis if you breathe silicate dust, which are particles of C60. But individual, or, but dissolved molecules of silica in water, your body needs for, you know, healthy teeth and bones. So it's kind of like, yeah, so you want to make sure you get singly dissolved molecules of C60 in, an, in a healthy oil for your C60 product. And I know the last thing we didn't talk about is organic. It's all organic. It's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yes, yes, absolutely. All of our organics are all organic uh, farm sourced oils. And in fact, because... <laughs> Our C6, carbon 60 is 100% C60 and we use sublimated. It's technically organic too, because organic means carbon, carbon molecule. So yeah, there's even our C60 is organic. And then there was a question about shipping to Scandinavia or Europe, because you're based in the US, which countries do you ship to? Do you, I don't know if you know that. Well, we ship pretty much to everywhere in the world, except the countries that the US government forbids us to ship from. Oh, and a few okay. governments in the Middle East, they're, they're really kind of freaked out down there. So we kind and of then, avoid shipping to the Middle East and, uh, and, uh, and some other places because of uh, problems. But, but uh, yeah, you got, of course, you got to go through the, there's a few, we have a few uh, affiliates that sell our product in Europe. There's so yeah, in, maybe I can get that list and get that to my Yeah, Yeah, because yeah. there's a guy in the Netherlands and there's a couple others. Right. around and you can and, and you, you know you know how much a pain if you've ever imported anything into europe yeah yeah yeah. That, yeah 
in the you know especially in English speaking countries like Australia, New Zealand, we've got we have some uh, affiliates there too. And so rather than dealing with the the whole yeah the whole custom service, it's it's so best it to it, get an affiliate in those countries. Yeah. Okay. I will. We will definitely post those links for you for those of you that are in Europe that you know. And mm -hmm. I do. I did put a link in there that is an affiliate link for me. And also gives you 10% off. So if you use that link or use Vision 10 as a code, you get my discount. Um, so if you want to buy, get some for yourself. So there's last question is about like the FDA. Like if you, you since you have all, you know, you have the research evidence from all, which wasn't done by you, but you know, other scientists, um, the testimony is the safety features. Why isn't it FDA approved? Is it like FDA is just- No, like, no, no, no. FDA is in a dilemma because they have found C60. Now, pristine C60 in its natural form cannot be patented. Ah. Pharmaceutical companies have found that you can attach many pharmaceutical drugs to C60 molecule and pass it through the digestive system without it being destroyed by the H by the hydrochloric acid. That's like if you look at your pharmaceutical and you'll, it'll say HCl on the end of it, uh -huh. because they attach the hydrochloric acid to that pharmaceutical, so it'll pass through your digestive system. And they found C60 will do the same thing. They can attach things to the C pharmaceuticals to the C60 and pass through. So they, the pharmaceutical companies have taken out millions of dollars, probably tens of millions of dollars wow. of, of patents or, you know, on C60, you know, because they're, they're using it as a delivery for their pharmaceuticals. In fact, someday most of your pharmaceuticals might be delivered with the C60 molecule attached to it. It's so crazy. I mean, that's so, so the FDA can't go after C60 because you know the FDA, all the FDA executives are pharmaceutical former former pharmaceutical employees, executives who will leave the FDA and go to work for pharmaceutical companies. And the fact is that pharmaceutical companies have tens of millions of dollars, perhaps, of patents on things attached to C60. So if they said C60 was bad, then yeah. uh, you know then they just lose tens of millions of dollars and you would, a, you would never a... work in the pharmaceutical industry again. So it's... that's not so they can't really go after C60. But they don't like it because it has really all these health benefits, but they can't really attack it because they're in the game too. Uh, <laughs> and the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical executives, by the way, use carbon 60. It's, it's oh, just crazy. I mean, it's the same. It. when you look up the natural vision improvement online and there's so much discreditation of it, we have like millions of people accomplished this, got rid of glasses, and yet. You know, there's also, and I, I'm not a conspiracy person yet, and we don't want to really end on this note, but the idea is that, yes, I always say, see for yourself, you know, test things for yourself. And, you know, just because there's a big political lobby organization that doesn't allow us to say certain things. So, but we're going to come to a close on YouTube Live. We're going to continue. I know you hopefully have a little bit longer. We went really Oh, yes, long. I do. Yeah, um, I, have, I have plenty of time. Okay, great, great. So we're going to close the YouTube Live. Thank you so much for watching. I put the link in the YouTube as well. So if you do want to purchase some, then use my link. You get 10% off. And also come back next week. Uh, we have a special guest talking about CBD, which is kind of what we talked about a little bit. Could be helpful with glaucoma. And um, she's an expert in that. So thank you so much, Ken. It's been incredibly uh, helpful to have you on. And every time I hear you talk, a little bit more clicks. There's a lot of science in there. But <laughs> oh, yes. It's so fascinating. So I'm so grateful for this product. I've been taking it. I feel so much more better, uh, so much better, not more better. Um, and it's just incredible. We had somebody who was supposed to be here as a guest. She couldn't make it, but we have also a great success story to kind of close this in a beautiful tight bow. She had a corneal uh, disease and was supposed to get surgery. I didn't even know this. She's a friend of mine. Took the C60 Purple Power for three or four months and then the doctor said, oh, what's going on? I'm like, that's so weird. Your cornea looks perfect. You don't need the surgery. So, <laughs> yeah, that so happens a lot. That happens a lot. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's all she changed. So she didn't like, you know, do any other protocols or took any other medications or anything. So I wish she could have shared this herself, but she's not available to come on today. That's why I wanted to say that. And maybe we bring her on another time when we do, if we ever do this again. But yes, I just want to let you know that this is really powerful stuff. And ideally you take it to prevent things, right? Versus waiting till it's really bad. Um, however, even then it's always, there's always hope like can your own story and Gary's story and so many other stories can attest. And then A and D is one of the, there's no fix. There's no solution from the eye care industry. Whereas a cataract, you can do surgeries, with lens replacement surgeries, 
But with AMD, you basically there's nothing they can do. You know, they can give you some injections, but nothing really that helps. Oh, and there, there is all. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you've heard the latest of the cataracts. They they came up with this new a new drug, I guess, that is delivered by eye drops. And uh, in in three months, it completely eliminated cataracts. First, they did it in, in rats, and then they did it in dogs. And uh, and uh, and and actually, it's been approved, and it's going to come out as a medication for dogs. That three months, a little an eye drop, a couple of eye drops a day is going to get rid of cataracts. Is that already commercially available? No, it's I, I believe it's. I believe it is. It either is or soon will be commercially available for dogs. So you can actually get the eye drop for dogs. <laughs> my, my dog, he has a cataract. Here, can you get me? And it's kind of like oh, that. Oh, wow, so, that is so, okay. <laughs> remember that, that, that stuff that's, you know, they used to get the horse medicine for, right? They go get the horse medicine for a certain something. But anyway, yeah, it's the same kind of thing now. You know, they have heard a lot of things before animals before they give them to people. I, I love that also about you that, you know, this is not C60, it's some other stuff. But I think we're all about sharing the truth and empowering people with information and not just trying to, sell you something that might not work for a particular thing. So anyway, all right, we got to go off YouTube. It's, we're going to continue here in the Clear Vision Club. So bye YouTube. Thank you so much, Ken. This was wonderful.